Around the world, you will find stories of cryptids, which are creatures that some people believe exist, but whose existence has never fully been proven or debunked. Well-known examples include Bigfoot of North America and the Yeti of Asia. This is the story of one of the world's most famous cryptids, the Loch Ness Monster. Said to inhabit Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands, it has been described as a large aquatic creature. I'm Donald and this is my assistant, Bear. Everything we know about the Loch Ness Monster comes from eyewitness accounts, much disputed photographs, and unusual sonar readings in the loch. But how did people come to believe such a creature could exist? The history of supposed sightings is as interesting as the monster itself. So let's travel back in time to where it all began. Pictish carvings over 1,500 years old depict a mysterious aquatic creature that has never been identified. The first written report of a monster near Loch Ness comes from a 7th century biography of the Irish monk St. Columba. It states that in the year 565, Columba came across a group of locals burying a man who had been swimming in the river Ness, which connects to the loch, and had been attacked and killed by a water beast. Columba then told one of his followers to cross the river. The man was approached in the water by the monster, but Columba made the sign of the cross and told it to go back. The monster immediately stopped and fled. For centuries afterward, Reports of similar sightings only appeared occasionally. It wasn't until 1933 that the legend of a monster in Loch Ness came to the world's attention. On July 22nd of that year, a man named George Spicer and his wife were driving near the loch when they saw what they described as a most extraordinary form of animal crossing the road and heading for the loch. They said the creature was about 4 feet high and 25 feet long with a long neck, and that it disappeared into the water. A report of Spicer's sighting was published in a Scottish newspaper on August 4th, and it inspired worldwide interest. It was this event that led to the solidification of the creature's official name, the Loch Ness Monster. That same year, on November 12th, Hugh Gray took the first photograph that allegedly depicted the monster. As you can see, this photo is quite blurry and hard to make out so it is hard to say exactly what Gray photographed. It has been suggested that the subject depicted could be an otter, a swan, or even a dog fetching a stick. On January 5th, 1934, on a moonlit night, motorcyclist Arthur Grant claimed that he almost hit the creature at about 1 a.m., but it saw him and quickly fled back into the lock. On April 14th, 1934, the Daily Mail published a photograph that, for a long time, was considered good evidence of the monster's existence. The photo depicted what appeared to be a head and neck protruding from the loch's surface. Said to have been taken by physician Robert Wilson, it became famously known as the Surgeon's Photograph. In 1994, however, it was revealed to have been a hoax. The head and neck were actually sculpted and attached to a toy submarine. In the decades since then, there have been many more unconfirmed sightings. Scientists have proposed many different explanations for what each one could be. In 1933, it was suggested that the monster was actually a surviving population of plesiosaurs, which were long-necked aquatic reptiles that lived and became extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs. This quickly became a popular explanation, and today, many people picture the monster as a plesiosaur. However, due to many factors, this is unlikely. For instance, if plesiosaurs were actually found in Loch Ness, people would see them regularly because they would have to come up for air several times a day. But you may be surprised to learn that many scientists believe that the monster could actually be a very large eel. Loch Ness has a population of eels, and an unusually large specimen would actually fit many of the described sightings and sonar reads. In any case, the Loch Ness Monster remains one of the most famous examples of cryptozoology, 
Even the surgeon's photograph has become a classic and iconic image in its own right. The mystery of the lock remains, and perhaps one day the truth of it all will be discovered. Bear and I thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Wildlife Chronicles. We'll see you on our next adventure.